Hello, everyone. This is Mark Plaster, Senior Executive Editor of Emergency Physicians Monthly, and you're listening to EP Talk, the place where emer emergency physicians come to talk about things that are important to us, sometimes professionally, sometimes personally. So uh, today, my uh, guest is Andreas Frank. He's the president of Frontline Care, which is one of the three divisions of Hillrom. Um, and we're going to be later on, we're going to be talking about uh, one of their their updated, I wouldn't say in innovations, but it's an update of a very uh, common product that we all know about, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, first, I want to I want to introduce you to Andreas and uh, talk a little bit about how you got here. I, uh, we, we, before we started, we were talking about Skinny Atlas, New York. <laughs> and and if, if you're not from New York, uh, you hear that term, you hear that, that city term, and you think Skinny Atlas, that's the name of the, of the town? And uh, tell, tell me a little about Skinny Atlas. Yeah, no, that's great, Mark. Thank you for the uh, for the introduction. And it's not just that I'm not from New York. I'm not from the U.S. originally. <laughs> um, I actually I grew up um, in Germany and uh, moved around a little bit and studied in Texas. Oh, really? Um, where in Texas? Where where in Texas? I was at uh, UT for oh. for a year. Okay. And uh, then I I actually I came to the U.S. Uh, originally when I when I started to work in, in DC. And okay. uh, so I spent 10 years of my life in, in DC um, working. Work was this with uh, um, marketing? What were we doing in New York or in Washington, DC? In DC, I, was, uh, I started out working with, uh, with McKinsey uh, in the consulting okay. space. And then I spent uh, uh, a number of years working at Danaher uh, Corporation, which is based out of DC, and at the time they just started to build out their their medical division. So oh, it was a very that. exciting time, sort of early 2000s. Um, and then uh, from there, I actually lived for several years in Chicago <laughs> uh, when I first joined Hillrom, which is just now coming up on 10 years ago. Wow. Um, I lived in Chicago and. Um, yeah, a couple of years ago, um, you know, we picked up with the family and the girls and, and my wife and, and we all uh, came up here to, uh, to Skinny Atlas. We, we love it. It's great. Yeah. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, upstate New York, the Finger Lakes uh, area, it's absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. And uh, Skinny Atlas uh, looks like it would be uh, spelled S K I N N Y Atlas, and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> not but even you, close. It, not even close. Can you spell it? Can you spell Skinny Atlas? S K A N E A T E L E S. I do that every time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The first uh, when I was driving up there for um, the uh, the wedding, and um, I was I couldn't wait to see this on the sign because I thought this is skin. And then when I saw it, I thought, how can do they get that into Skinny Atlas? And then I, I started actually trying to pronounce it, and I said, well, that makes sense. Okay, I finally got it. <laughs> but I love that I love that name that uh, town name. It's uh, it ranks right up there with. Uh, my brother lived in, in uh, Western Kentucky and there was a small town down there. You will not believe it. And then the town's name was Monkey's Eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, I, I think Skinny Atlas uh, uh, is, is just funny in its pronunciation because uh, it actually is, is a, I think it's a Native American uh, term. Uh, for yeah, that's tribe. right. There are quite a that's, few of them that, around here. there. Exactly it's only right. when you pronounce it that you finally uh, see the humor in it. But anyway, getting back to uh, Hillrom, you've been with Hillrom for about uh, 10 years, and you're now the president of the Frontline Care, which is one of the three divisions. And uh, tell me a little bit about about that, and then we'll we'll start talking about your work with uh, Welch Allen products. Yeah, ab absolutely. So um, I, I would say over the last 10 years, Hillrom has been quite on a journey of transformation. I, I think a lot of uh, people and a lot of clinicians, certainly uh, when they first hear the name Hillrom, may think of hospital beds. Yeah. And that is certainly um, a big and important part of the portfolio. And frankly, 10 years ago, that was 
um, the main business of of the company at the time. Yeah. And it's a it's a uh, uh, amazingly well known brand. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of trust. Uh, there's a lot of innovation um, that that's happened over you know a long period of time, and um, we're really uh, I think charting the way there with uh, our smart beds now. Yeah. Um, that are connected, that provide um, you know really interesting new monitoring capabilities and communication capabilities. Yeah. And they will continue to be a big part of of who Hillrom is. But today, it's really so much more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, over the last ten years, the two big areas uh, that that we added are um, a range of surgical um, products, um, specifically focused around surgical infrastructure. Uh, tables, slides, booms, um, some yeah. of the, the video integration that's happening in the OR. And that's a really, obviously for hospital systems, a very important piece of their capital spending and their revenue generation. Yeah. Um, but then we also made a really transformational step about five years ago with the acquisition of Welch Allen. And that okay. really... Uh, the reason why that's so transformational uh, in my mind is because it it moved uh, the portfolio and Hillrom and who we are beyond the hospital. Yeah, yeah, it exactly. Really, you know, positioned us in primary care, in the home to some extent, uh, in alternate settings, yeah. um, where frankly a lot of the care is shifting for all the right reasons. And I think we've just seen that with COVID yeah. happening in an even accelerated fashion. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you, one of the things that uh, emergency physicians, you know, uh, I've been in the, the, this field for 40 years almost, and, um, and I have seen the emergency medicine was built on a delivery of care idea. The idea that uh, you didn't have to go to a doctor's office, you could come to the hospital. It used to be just everything, um, uh, you know, only the the most severe emergencies and it landed in the emergency room. And then over the last 40 years, people started preferentially coming to the emergency department as the front door of care for a variety of things. Yeah. Um, and, um, and so emergency physicians have been for decades tuned into this transition of care uh, it, delivery models uh, moving outside the hospital. And even so, uh, you know, I've been talking to a lot of my colleagues about, uh, about where we go to he from here as far as uh, extending into the community and having paramedics and having uh, advanced practice providers going into the community and communicating with a, uh, with a uh, home base. When I say home, not in the home, but a uh, tel uh, telemetrically uh, connected board certified emergency physician and then providing care out. And what that really requires is the kind of thing that uh, um, Welch Allen and you're doing right now, which is start to transform these basic instruments that, that we've had for decades. I mean, when I first graduated from medical school, the very first thing, oh, the, the second thing, the very first thing I got was a stethoscope. And the very second thing I got was a Welch Allen uh, otoscope, ophthalmoscope, which I still have today and still use today. And, uh, and th the thing of it is, is that when the idea of trying to connect those uh, to the uh, uh, to cameras, to internet, to, to advance those, those technologies, they are not just, it, they didn't just become an improvement on uh, an old technology. It opened a door. And this is what you're talking about. It is opening a door to uh, pushing care further and further out. Now you're you're interested. We'll, we'll talk about the, uh, the the two things that you're you know we're we're going to be mentioning today the the panoptic uh, um, panoptic plus and the macro view plus. We'll talk about those as products, yep. but it's important to really put those in perspective uh, of not just improving the care at the bedside, but starting to open the door to a lot of other possibilities. Let's, let's talk about- uh... Absolutely, Mark. And, and what you just said, it, it, it resonates so much because our vision for Hillrom is advancing connected care. 
Yeah. And the way we sort of, the way I described it and we described this for frontline care is to say, we are empowering clinicians yeah. to proactively care for patients everywhere. Yeah. And what that means to me is there's just a massive amount of barriers and, and, and limitations to how people communicate and how care is provided today. Yeah. And that's, that is the, the, the opportunity ahead of us with digitizing a right. lot of technology is to break down those barriers. And, and that's yeah. what this is all about. And, and, you know, that is true for the physical exam, just like uh, many other modalities that are, that are, uh, that clinicians are using. Let's, let's jump into the, uh, the meat of this, uh, the Panoptic Plus, uh, you know, you, you've got, you sent me some, uh, basic talking points that I want to, I want to make sure that the listeners, uh, this has a 20 times larger viewing area. Okay. The, the, uh, um, the ophthalmoscope, we're, we're looking at the ophthalmoscope and, uh, you know, I, I can recall, you know, climbing in there and, you know, looking around and swinging the thing around and trying, you know, trying to get the patient's cooperation and, and, uh, you know, uh, to get a direct uh, uh, view of their retina. And so much information can be seen if you actually get uh, a good a good view of their retina. And uh, the panoptic uh, has a 20 times larger viewing area. Uh, I mean, how do you accomplish that? I don't understand that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, Mark, you, you said at the beginning, you, you said, you know, is this really innovation? It is truly a highly innovative product. I mean, it's a it's a completely redesigned concept of a head and a handle. And, and really that's, that's what's needed to achieve a step function improvement like a 20 times uh, improved field of view. Uh, so in, in a lot of ways, I think we're really revolutionizing um, yeah. how care is gonna be provided and, and sort of the accuracy of treatment. And, the, the way I think about it is we're doing all of that. I think if you pick up today, if you pick up the Panoptic Plus, it will feel familiar and it should yeah. feel familiar. And it has the same sort of, um, you know, just, just it gives you the same sort of comfort that you're used to when you pick up a Welch Allen device. Yeah. Um, but it has packed into it all this innovation in the handle, in the head. That's just absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm yeah. always... I'm always blown away, frankly, when, you know, it's, it's just like with the beds, you think about primary care and these tools, right? And, yeah. and the amount of innovation that's happening is, is, is tremendous. It, it has a, um, a, a, it features quick eye alignment uh, technology, which helps better direct a patient's gaze. And that is, <laughs> that is so important. I mean, the, you know, I, uh, as as someone who's been doing this for a long time, you literally are chasing somebody's eye around uh, when you're trying to do this. And uh, when I when I read that, I thought, finally, somebody has addressed a really basic problem here. Yeah, I I have to admit, like I I obviously try and you know um, use and and play with the devices and 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 try to get sort of a personal impression, right? And and yeah. yes, it, it's it's. It is very important to keep the eye aligned, and and I think that's where the the quick eye, uh, the the light technology that helps you sort of focus uh, where the patient is looking will be will be a yeah. big step forward. And and one of the things I saw uh, is and, and and correct me if I'm wrong because I, I don't uh, I don't have one in my hand to to look at, but uh, one of the biggest features I think is the uh, digitizing of what you're seeing. Uh, which allows you not only to send it to somebody else to say, this is what I saw, uh, but also to put into the medical record uh, and to, uh, uh, which is a huge, a huge benefit. Uh, and also uh, oper because it's um, uh, digital, because it's digital, you, you don't necessarily have to have your face right down in the patient's face. You actually can be looking at a screen uh, is that correct? So it's um, it, it is a huge opportunity here with digitizing the images. Um, today we have that in our um, MacroView Plus, MacroView Plus ophthalmoscope, uh, otoscope. Mm -hmm. um, we have not yet um, okay. gone to market with the 
ophthalmos gold. Okay. The, the big opportunity here is, I think what, what you said, all of that is true, is you know the storage of the image, um, looking at the images over time to see progression of disease, the sharing of the image with other clinicians potentially, right? That they right. can help uh, with a, uh, uh, a more accurate interpretation maybe, or, or to share it with a specialist. But also I always think about, just like when you go to the dentist, Right and and the dentist right they they do a an X ray and show you they're able to show you the image on the screen and tell yeah. you all the things that are going on. Well, think about you know the image of the ear, you yeah. know in the future the image of the eye. Just the ability to communicate with yeah. parents with patients, it's going to really change um, uh, the, the 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 world of physical assessment. Yes, it, it's going to tie people. Uh, you know, I do a lot of work in uh, in developing uh, countries. I I have uh, helped yeah. build a couple of different hospitals. One in in uh, Kenya, one in uh, Sudan, and um, these are what I would call intermediate technologies. They're they're you know you can have a four million dollar CT scanner or MRI scanner that's never going to make it into the developing world, uh, but you can have um, instruments there that have uplinks to uh, specialists around the world and can show this is what I have. And you can take a, a, a provider who may not be technically uh, um, a spe at specialist level, but who can obtain the information and, uh, and, and be very, very helpful. Uh, so I'm, I'm really interested in digitizing images medical images, whether wherever they are. And I think that we've looked at, that's that's happened with uh, pe people taking pictures of uh, skin lesions uh, mm -hmm. and a, a lot of other things. And now uh, the idea that we're moving into that with the basic physical exam uh, to me is just incredible in its, inva its advancement. So um, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm really anxious to actually I wish I had it in my hand. I, I, I'd be showing it to people. And uh, unfortunately, I'm sure we'll be able to get one in your hand. If you don't have one today, <laughs> we'll get you one. Okay, um, great. Very soon, because you, you'll, I, I'm sure you'll, you'll really appreciate all the, all the innovation that's gone into it. I think also the digitization opens up sort of this, this opportunity for, you know, uh, uh, sharing with specialists, but also you know, down the road, um, have more technology. And in particular, where in, in, in those images where everything is okay, to do it with really smart screening, with technology, with AI, with machine learning, right. um, I, I think, you know, that will help, um, you know, further sort of improve the accuracy of, a, of the diagnosis. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I, I think there's a lot of, um, a, a lot of time that a non ophthalmologist looks in the looks in the eye and doesn't always know exactly what they're looking at. I mean, even uh, even when they've been trained and trained and trained, uh, I think they haven't seen enough of it. And and so when they see something that's unusual, um, they or, or they're not sure exactly what they're seeing. They see it flash by in front of them. That's why this 20x larger viewing area is so important is to get a chance to actually study what you're looking at. And uh, I think that you have the ability to actually train a whole generation of physicians in, in more um, extensive examination of the eye. So I, I, I congratulate you on that. Uh, let, let's talk about oh, the macro, let, let's talk about the macro view plus. Uh, this is a three X larger viewing area compared with a traditional otoscope. Uh, and, and this is what we were talking about before, it's compatible with Android and Apple smartphones and the free Eye Examiner Pro app. Tell me about that. Yeah, so it's, um, it's uh, you know, the, the Micro Plus op uh, uh, Otoscope is, again, so a very similar form factor, um, head and handle, um, yeah. but again, with a lot of new technology and innovation packed into it. One of the ones you talked about, which is the the uh, compatibility or the ability to attach a smartphone to uh, the back of the otoscope. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with that attachment, the camera that you have on your smartphone aligns with the uh, uh, the viewing area of the image. And so, you know, we have um, a, a an app 
uh, for Well Jalan that we have, you know, that is running on the on the device uh, where you can capture the image and then share it from there, right? Uh, you can store it obviously um, in the EMR. You can communicate with the with the patient, um, or you can share it with, um, you know, your network or specialists if. Uh, uh, if you want to get a second opinion or additional, you have additional questions, or you want to just have a reference point to go back to uh, later in time. So th that is that is a, a really, um, uh, I think, exciting uh, new capability that we have here, and you know we really we're looking to bring that to a lot of other devices, um, you know, for for physical exam, you know, eyes, skin, other devices in the future. The um, I'm sure you've thought of this uh, in today's um, the advancement uh, and the more educated patient uh, may in fact uh, it may there may come a time where patients actually purchase these they've got several kids and and rather than run in you know they, they ear, ear infections and problems like that are such a problem that uh, if they could uh, if a mom was skilled enough uh, to be able to to view an image and send it to the pediatrician. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You know, they they would. Uh, I, I think there were probably consumers who would invest uh, in something like that. Um, and and the step up, of course, is what I was talking to you about uh, before. Was that the idea of physician extenders uh, doing going back to house calls, uh, dropping in to see patients in their home, not bringing them into a, a community setting where they can transmit all kinds of diseases and and uh, having a paramedic stop in and, and take a look at the, the child and, and telemetrically uh, convey that information back to the office and um, keep the patient in place, you know, avoid all the problems that we've had this year with COVID and other, and other things, and, uh, and still have a highly uh, accurate and um, in-depth evaluation. I, we, we've had this, I, I don't know if you had an opportunity to do any uh, um, uh, telemedicine with patients, but uh, uh, it is very limited. I mean, you, you get a thorough history. You can see them. Uh, you know, you can get that gestalt of how they're doing and how they're feeling. But uh, you don't see in their eyes. You don't see in their ears, and and you, you don't see the, what their throat looks like. And 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 uh, without additional digitized uh, instruments like these, you you're not able to do that. So I think it opens the door to uh, actual house calls. I've been saying this for a long, long time. We need to have uh, physician extenders who are doing house calls who are then relaying that information back to uh, a, a base physician and it's an improvement of care. So uh, I think things like MacRevue Plus are gonna be really important in, the, in that step forward in, a, in the evolution of medicine. I, I, I do, I, I agree. I, I do believe that these digital tools will um, open up or enable sort of care to be provided um, uh, or, or diagnostics to happen in new um, locations, right? Outside of a hospital, outside of a primary care office. I do believe there's a very important role for a trained clinician well into the future. I, I personally don't believe that consumer devices are going to replace um, what is needed with a, a real clinical tool. I believe there's a lot of really good technology that is being developed for monitoring, for for sort of screening. It's um, uh, I, I think the the sensitivity is pretty good. It's starting to get pretty good. The specificity of these devices, I think, is very challenging. And so yeah. that's I think where the, the the trained clinician and the the, the clinical tools are really, really important. Yeah, I, I don't think the average mom wants to start sticking something in their kid's ear. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not like you, uh, like I would do, you know, uh, I know what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty aggressive at getting in there and digging around and, and they might, they might not want to want to do that. But I think that uh, I personally think that uh, the, the intermediate step is the trained physician extender uh, going and doing house calls. I think there's going to be a, a, a place for that, um, uh, you know, and we're, we're thinking about pediatrics and stuff like that, but at the same time, I, mm -hmm. one of the places that I've talked to is uh, uh, emergency physicians who are working with uh, physician extenders that go into uh, nursing homes and mm -hmm. uh, extended care facilities and uh, preventing a lot of the 
performing a thorough exam, collaborating with a, a, a base station physician and avoiding that patient having to be transported, which is very expensive, maybe difficult for the patient. Uh, and so every time I see advancements like this in uh, uh, digital uh, diagnosis, uh, d digital imaging, uh, I think that this is uh, definitely a, a view, uh, a step forward in, in that in that future. So, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This has been very, very delightful uh, to talk to you and uh, learn about you and also about uh, returning to Skinny Atlas and, uh, uh, and, and learning about uh, the advancements that Welch Allen has, uh, has done and Hill Rom uh, is, uh, is pushing forward. Thank you for your vision. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I, I hope to see that uh, that uh, instrument uh, sometime soon. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, this is, there's a hundred years of history here yeah. um, with these sorts of tools and devices um, that we feel really, really passionate about. Yeah. Um, our teams are really passionate about the quality that we deliver. Um, the you know the advancements how we change really what we talk about is how do we change your view how do we change the view how do we move from a fleeting image to a real diagnostic capability and i, I think these tools here with the macro view plus um otoscope and the panoptic plus ophthalmoscope are a big step in that direction and i, I think our customers will be excited about it. If uh, our listeners want to uh, get more information, um, where should they go? Websites? Uh, who? What's what's the next step? Yeah, go to www.hillrom, H-I-L-L-R-O-M dot com, and you will find um, the whole portfolio uh, there on our website. Our different uh, value propositions, clinical focus areas, including uh, physical assessment and and the whole range of products that we uh, that we have. Hillrom.com, H-I-L-L-R-O-M.com, and that's the place to go to find out more information about the Panoptic Plus and the Macro View Plus. Thank you very much, Andreas, uh, for joining me this morning, and I, I hope that our uh, Listeners, uh, our viewers uh, have enjoyed it. Maybe you thought again about an instrument that you've used, you've had in your hands for maybe decades, and they've actually built a better, uh, better version. And uh, you should take a look at it. I, I think that uh, it would be something that, that would add to your practice. So thanks for joining us this morning, and um, I hope to see you again in EP Talk. Thank you.